All right, it uh, looks like uh, just about everyone here is here, so we will go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks once again for joining us for today's webinar on what's new in Windchill 11.2. Um, if you have not joined us on a webinar before, uh, just some basics about the, uh, the interface. Uh, currently, everyone is muted, uh, so uh, if you do have uh, questions, um, that you have the ability to, uh, to raise your hand and it will flag us that you have your hand up. Uh, there's also a questions panel, so the easiest way to ask questions uh, is typically to uh, type them into the, the questions panel. Uh, I may see them and try to answer them uh, during the presentation or at the end, uh, I'll review the questions and sort of go through them all at that point. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, so like I said, uh, today's uh, webinar uh, is on what's new in Windchill 11.2, uh, uh, which just came out uh, about a month or so ago, uh, toward the beginning of June, I believe. Um, so came out very recently. We're going to go over uh, sort of a, an overview of all of the updates and enhancements uh, in Windchill 11.2. Uh, so here's our agenda. I'm just going to do a quick introduction to uh, boundary systems, uh, who we are, um, and uh, and uh, what we do. Uh, we'll go over the Windchill 11.2 enhancements. I'll do uh, sort of an overview PowerPoint, uh, show you a lot of the changes, and also some dem demonstration uh, of some of the specific uh, enhancements that have been made in uh, 11.2. Uh, and like I said, uh, we'll do a Q&A at the end. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, you can type them into the questions panel at any point. You don't have to hold them to the end, but we'll probably uh, review most of those uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, before we go any farther, uh, I'm just going to bring up a quick poll uh, to make sure everybody can uh, hear me okay. Uh, so first poll question, pretty simple. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to vote there. And it looks like just about everybody has voted. So we'll go ahead and close the poll and share the results. And yes, you can hear me okay, which is always a good start. So just a quick introduction. Uh, I'm Wade Morvek. I'm the Director of Global Services with Boundary Systems. Um, I've been uh, with Boundary Systems for just about 13 years now. And I have actually, it's now uh, 20 years ish experience uh, with PTC products. Um, started out doing pro engineer training um, and gradually moved more and more into you know, sort of consulting uh, and implementation and more uh, from the Creo side, uh, which I still get to play with occasionally uh, into the windshield side and the, you know, the product lifecycle management. Uh, Boundary Systems uh, is a PTC partner uh, headquartered out of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we cover primarily uh, the Midwest, um, but uh, also uh, you know, work with a lot of companies outside of that. Um, and uh, we actually um, you know, have a, a pretty wide presence, um, you know, even outside of the U.S. now. Uh, we have uh, you know, uh, engineers uh, and, and, uh, that are based out of South Africa. Um, so you know, we can sort of help you out, uh, not just locally, but, uh, but globally. Um, we focus on product lifecycle management, data management, you know, CAD design and consulting, CAM simulation. Uh, so our goal is to you know, have, uh, have as much uh, experience and knowledge uh, of PTC products and sort of the manufacturing process in general uh, so that we can consult with you and sort of look at um, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Uh, what challenges are you facing? Uh, and we can come up with a solution uh, that's going to meet your needs uh, rather than just coming in with you know, sort of our, our one or two things that, that we can do and trying to figure out how to fit those in. Our goal is to make sure we focus on you know, how to help you uh, accomplish your goals. Uh, and here are just some of the awards and accreditations that we have. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, we're uh, primarily or uh, largely a PTC partner, so we do a lot with um, you know, Creo CAD software and Windchill PLM, 
uh, and uh, IoT and all of the things that PTC is involved in. Uh, but we also have some additional partners that we work with uh, that goes beyond uh, sort of those, uh, the, the PTC offerings. Um, so eTraj is a partner we work with a lot for you know, sort of custom solutions that, that work with and uh, uh, sort of enhance and uh, complement uh, the PC, PTC products. Uh, ZWCAD is, is 2D CAD, so a lot of people still have you know, a lot of uh, AutoCAD around. Um, you know, ZWCAD is a potential replacement for that. Um, so again, if, if you do have some things that, that you're pretty sure PTC doesn't cover, you know, feel free to, to ask us about them. Uh, we may still have uh, you know, sort of other solutions that fit into those areas as well. Uh, and uh, if you do have questions after the presentation, feel free to reach out to, uh, to me with any technical questions or to sales at boundarysys.com uh, if you have uh, you know, more pricing and packaging questions. And I'll put this slide back up again uh, at the end of the presentation. So the, uh, before we dive into you know, sort of what is new in Windchill 11.1, uh, another quick poll question here. Uh, let me launch this. Uh, so just what Windchill version are you currently using? Um, so you can pick which Windchill version, or if you don't use Windchill, uh, you, can, you can pick that one. All right, we've got most of you have voted, so I'll go ahead and close that one. And so here are those results. Uh, so it looks like um, most of you are on Windchill 11 or 11.1 at this point. Uh, you know, quite a few of you are still on Windchill 10.2, uh, and only a, a couple are on 10.1 or earlier. Uh, and everybody actually does use Windchill, which would make sense for this type of presentation. Um, and one more, uh, which is what windchill capabilities are you currently using? Uh, and this one you can select uh, you can select more than one, so you can pick all that apply here. Okay. All right, so here are those results. So everybody's doing CAD data management, which is not surprising. Uh, a lot of you are doing change management and uh, actually a pretty good, good amount of you are doing um, you know, some product structure bomb management or project management as well. So um, you know, we have a lot of you that actually are sort of using you know, more of the extended uh, windshield capabilities. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure if we put up this same poll uh, a few years ago, uh, all of the non-CAD data management numbers would be much lower. So I think everyone's sort of starting to expand into that real PLM area, uh, which again is good because that's where PTC you know, continues to make a lot of the enhancements. All right, so let's uh, let's dive in and take a look at you know, what is new in Windchill 11.2. Uh, so first of all, just a quick look at the Creo uh, Windchill compatibility roadmap. Um, so uh, Windchill 11.2 uh, is going to be compatible or is compatible with Windchill 4.0 uh, starting at M100 and later. Uh, Windchill 11.2 is not going to have support for Creo 5.0. Uh, so it will support 4 and then six, and then when they come out, uh, support is planned for Creo seven and eight. Uh, and this goes sort of back to, this is more of a Creo thing, but uh, both Creo five and Creo six are sort of short uh, support releases. Uh, Creo four is an extended support release. Creo seven is gonna be another extended support release. So uh, Windchill 11.2, uh, if you are planning on going to that, uh, you'll need to either stay on Creo four or move to Creo six. 11.1 uh, .1 will support all of those, but then it's not going to support uh, Creo 8 uh, when that comes out uh, in a couple of years. Um, 
And uh, again, this is something you can find uh, find the compatibility roadmap on the PTC uh, website. Uh, if you're looking for it, or if you don't know where to find these types of things, feel free to, to reach out to us and we can help you locate this information. Um, so that's, again, sort of a quick look at, at just Windchill and Creo uh, compatibility support. Um, one of the first actual enhancements here, and again, this is one that, that sort of has you know, affects a lot of people um, is that uh, we have added the capability to do to edit attribute values during a save as operation. Um, so this is available both for common space and workspace save as operations. Um, if you look at the uh, the image down at the bottom of the screen here, uh, you can see uh, over here we have columns that we've added for our uh, our attributes on these objects. Uh, it allows multi-object or in-cell editing. So you can select multiple objects and then edit the value of all of those together, or you can just edit it right in the table. Um, you, uh, you can edit global and local attributes for parts, CAD, and documents. So this isn't limited to like just CAD or just parts or anything like that. Uh, and in fact, you can actually you know, edit those together. So here we have our, our uh, WT part structure with associated CAD, if we're doing a save as on all of that, we can edit the attributes and we can go in and modify those all together. Uh, it also will still in, enforce constraints on the attributes when you try to complete this operation. So if you have constraints on you know, specific values that, that things have to, to have or you know, specific ranges or anything like that, it's gonna enforce those constraints. Uh, in Windchill 11.2.0.0, uh, which is what is out right now, uh, it will only enforce those constraints uh, on attributes that you have changed. So if you've actually made changes to those attributes, it'll it'll enforce the constraints. Uh, any attributes that you haven't changed, it's not going to double check those. Uh, in I think 11.2.1.0, uh, we're planning on adding the ability to uh, also uh, check all of the attributes that are in the table instead of just the ones that have actually been modified. Um, and here you can see, uh, this is another sort of snapshot of going in and trying to modify uh, attributes, multiple attributes at the same time on multiple object types. So you can see in our table, uh, we have, I'll actually go through a demo and sort of show you this live. Uh, you know, we have WT parts, we have documents, we have CAD all selected, and then we hit the edit, uh, edit multiple attributes. Um, and so when we go in to try to change this string value, it highlights that the constraint, we have a legal value list constraint on, on this attribute uh, on CAD documents and parts and general documents, and the, uh, the valid values are different. So it sort of lets us know, um, you know, we can't set all of these uh, to um, you know, one of the, the Israel locations because that's not valid for some of the object types. Um, so let me actually show you that uh, real quick here. All right. So I'm in uh, Windchill 11.2 here. Uh, again, in general, the interface, you know, it looks sort of the same as what you're used to in 11.0 or 11.1. There's no sort of major, you know, uh, sort of layout changes here. So you can, you can navigate around pretty easily. Uh, I'm just going to go to my golf cart structure. And I'm going to actually go to this lower support. Um, and so if I take a look at that lower support, I can show that it has a, a couple of documents associated with that. So I'm actually going to take this whole assembly, and I just want to do a save as on it. 
Um, now, obviously, if you're doing uh, save as, I mentioned this will work both uh, with the common space save as or the workspace save as, uh, the, uh, you know, including documents in this because documents can't be added to a workspace. You know, those are only going to work on the common space side. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show all of my dependents. And I'm going to show documents. And I'm going to show this as a structure. Um, and I actually have a custom view set up here. So just like if you've ever you know, gone in to edit attributes uh, in your workspace, uh, you have to go in and create a view to tell it which of those custom attributes you want to include in there. Um, but, uh, but I've already done that. So I have three attributes here, location, material, and supplier. So again, for location, you know, I could go in and set the location uh, based on this, uh, this dropdown list. Uh, you know, if I go in and I tell it I want to define new names for everything, There we go. So we're going to have new names. We're going to generate new numbers. Uh, if I do want to go in and set the value on multiple items instead of just entering it over here, I can come in and I can hit uh, hit my edit attribute values icon. And when I do that, uh, it's going to let me choose which which attribute I'm changing. So if I just choose something like supplier, I can set that to Acme for all of those. And again, one of those was already Acme. One of them I changed to Acme. The other two, because they're documents, they don't actually have a supplier on them. Apply that. Um, and it applies that to all of those. Uh, if I go back, oh, I shouldn't have exited that. That's OK. Uh, if I go back and edit the attribute value and I choose location, Location is the one that actually has a legal value list constraint applied to it. Uh, and it, so it shows here for my document object type, the location attribute has a legal value list that's just Ohio, Illinois, and South, a South Africa, whereas the part has additional values. We can choose Colorado. We can choose Sweden. So we have additional options in there. Um, and so if I choose the pull down, I can select any of those. So I could go in and define all of these as Colorado. When I apply it, it updated the WT parts where that was a valid selection. It didn't make a change to the document. So it's not going to error out if I do that. It's just not going to change the things that that's not applicable for. Um, and again, I hit OK. And it's going to duplicate this, uh, you know, this assembly or or this product structure along with those documents and set all of those attributes uh, uh, along with that change. So in the past, I would have had to do the save as operation and then go back separately and do an edit attributes and start going in and making all of those changes. This can you know, sort of greatly speed up that process depending on how many attributes you're using. Uh, a couple other things to show you just while I'm here. Uh, if I go into my with attributes uh, view, if I customize that, So I'm going to go in uh, to my customized view list. Uh, I'm going to take that with attributes view and edit it. Um, and in here, if I, if as an administrator, I create a view to uh, to share it with other users, uh, I have a new option in 11.2 uh, to only share that with members of a specific context. So uh, I can actually go in and pick just a, a specific product that this view is sort of sort of going to be useful for and only share this with members of that context. So that's sort of a new option uh, in 11.2. All right, so let me jump back over to my PowerPoint. So uh, again, one of the big changes, you know, that ability to to edit your attributes during that save op save as operation instead of having to do uh, multiple steps here. Um, uh, the next uh, enhancement uh, has to do with multi-state 
representable visualization. So essentially what this means is if you look at uh, sort of this example that we have on the slide, uh, we have one part uh, that is this, this sort of tube or hose, um, and it's assembled in three different configurations. So we have it straight, we have it bent to the right, and we have it bent to the left. It's really the same part number, so it's three instances of the same WT part that's going into that, uh, that assembly for, for bomb purposes. Uh, so the, the new enhancement here is that uh, the dynamic visualization that shows up like in the visualization tab of the product structure browser will support loading representations based on the occurrence from the CAD structure. So uh, we can have uh, different CAD models uh, linked to that same WT part um, using image or contributing image association uh, so that it knows that those are available. Uh, and then it will use the appropriate representation in the visualization tab uh, so that you know, instead of showing you know, three different straight uh, hoses that, that are sort of the owner of that WT part, it's gonna show the correct configuration. Uh, again, this is something you didn't typically run into if you just opened up into full Creo view, you know, the published representation of the, of the top level assembly uh, but where it's dynamically putting together the representations of the components in that visualization tab, uh, that's where you would see this. Um, so again, just allows you to get a more uh, accurate visualization that way. Um, another uh, change in 11.2, uh, one of the changes for those of you who are, are not on Windchill 11.1 yet uh, is that starting with Windchill 11.1, there is license enforcement within Windchill. So uh, you have a, a license file that you can request from PTC and install on the Windchill server, uh, or you can just link it uh, you know, online uh, to PTC to pull your license file. Um, and then you put your users into license profiles that, uh, that are available to you uh, in order to access certain capabilities. Um, so here you can see the 11.1, uh, the different license profiles that were available and what CAD systems those supported. Uh, in 11.2.0.0 and, and later, there's one new one, uh, which is this PTC Creo Data Management and Visualization License. So that just aligns with the, the new uh, license packaging uh, that, that came out recently. Um, so if you have that, uh, license package, uh, you'll have that profile available uh, that you can add uh, add your users to to get that that capability. Um, with the licensing, one other change that they made to the licensing is that there is a there is an eBOM uh, management license that is required to do uh, some of the bomb management capabilities uh, that were previously sort of tied into some of the Creo data management capabilities. Uh, so it sort of aligns more with uh, the the intended functionality. Um, a couple of a uh, couple of additional enhancements that uh, have to do with Creo six and Windchill eleven point two. Uh, one is uh, extended support of system attributes. Uh, so <clears throat> essentially, there's a broader uh, a, a broader set of Windchill system attributes. Uh, that are supported and can be pulled into your Creo models and drawings uh, in order to see that information like on the face of a drawing. And so uh, there are uh, preferences uh, within Windchill that you can set to control which system attributes are being, uh, are being sort of shared or synchronized into the CAD files. Um, and it allows you to show that information, you know, for example, showing, um, you know, part names and numbers. So if you want to show the name and number of the WT part that's associated uh, with the CAD model, uh, you can share that information in and then show that on a drawing. Uh, there are additional options for like created on and created by and modified on and modified by. Uh, and again, within your windshield preferences, you can go in and control which of those are being shared uh, and uh, to, to what CAD systems. So uh, there's enhanced support here for Creo, because uh, some of this was previously supported with some of the third-party CAD systems through the workgroup manager, but not with Creo. Uh, there's also certain things that were supported with Creo, uh, but not with the third-party systems that uh, they've, they've enhanced that support as well. 
uh, again, all controlled through those preferences. Uh, this is uh, another enhancement. Actually, this is a Creo 6 enhancement. Uh, it works with all wind chill ver versions that support Creo 6. Um, but uh, again, because it's it's fairly new, and wind chill 11.2 is sort of the first version that supports 6. Uh, it's worth mentioning. Uh, this is uh, the addition of a new status column in the model tree that allows you to directly see sort of your PLM workspace status without having to switch over to the, the workspace window in the embedded browser. And so uh, you can see uh, right here uh, in the model tree, we have this wind chill status column. Uh, we can see if something's you know modified locally. Uh, we can see if it's checked out. We can see if it's new. Uh, we'll see that information here. Uh, sometimes you may have multiple statuses. Uh, so in that case, you know, you'll get a, an icon that you can hover over and you'll get a tool tip that gives you additional information. So, uh, you know, in this case, we can see that this is out of date. Uh, it's modified by me. It's also uh, out of date with the workspace configuration and it's not checked out to me. Uh, this, this one is just showing that it's not checked out to me and that the modifications need to be uploaded. So there's sort of multiple levels of information here. Uh, where it can show sort of the basic information right there at a glance. And then if I hover, I can get an extra layer of information. Uh, we can also access a lot of that information uh, or sort of a summary um, from, the, uh, uh, from the, the notification center in Creo. And so you can go in and get additional information uh, there. If, like in this case, the assembly isn't expanded in the model tree, you know, I can go to the notification center and get some additional information there. So again, really nice. Uh, this is available uh, with Creo 6 in Windchill 11.2 or uh, any other Windchill version uh, that supports uh, Creo 6. Uh, and I believe this is this is a column uh, you can add and remove from the model tree under you know the database. Uh, I think category uh, it's Windchill status. Uh, it uh, it is displayed by default, but if you don't want to see it, you can you can turn that off if you need to. Uh, sort of moving from from more CAD specific things to uh, again some of the more PLM uh, type topics uh, with change in configuration management. Uh, a couple of enhancements there. Uh, one is that they uh, added an effectivity tab to the product structure browser. So uh, if you're setting effectivity on parts uh, as part of the change process, uh, it's a little bit easier to go through and see that effectivity. Uh, you can actually see that uh, if I pull this up. You know, right here, I don't have effectivity set, um, but uh, I would be able to see that you know right there within the uh, within the the product structure browser without having to go hunt down that information elsewhere. Um, there have also just been some performance uh, improvements uh, within using the the product structure browser and you know going in and sort of navigating and making changes uh, you know, to your product structure. Uh, there's also an enhancement to uh, change management, uh, which is with your your full track changes. Uh, there's a new workflow option to used to be if you did a, a fast track change uh, that it would. The, uh, the workflow for the change notice would skip the change review board meeting. If you did a full track change, it would go through a change review board meeting, uh, but it basically just sent a task to one of the change administrators and that change review board uh, took place offline. Uh, the change in 11.2 is the addition, and it's sort of hard to see in the image down here, uh, sort of at the bottom of the screen. Uh, there, there's the option of fast track, but then you have the option of full track offline uh, or full track online. And so full track offline would work the same way that it, it has in the past with that sort of offline change review board meeting. Uh, full track online uh, would actually send tasks, you know, basically to everybody that's defined as part of that change review board. Um, and they would go through sort of the approval process uh, online. Uh, again, something that you can sort of manually customize uh, in the past, uh, but now it's sort of an out of the box uh, option uh, with change management. Um, 
for project management, uh, and several of you did say that you were using project management within Windchill, um, the, uh, the sort of main enhancement in 11.2, and this is something there have been quite a few enhancements to, uh, to project management in 11 and 11.1. Uh, one thing that was added in 11.2 is the introduction of sub plans to enhance project planning. So the idea here is that we can, we can have a separate project uh, that acts as sort of a sub-project uh, within a higher level project. Uh, this was available uh, a long time ago in Windchill, still is if you're using uh, classic project plans, uh, but as, uh, as classic project plans were phased out uh, and, and uh, Project Link moved more to enhanced project planning, that gave you a lot more uh, functionality and automation capabilities uh, than the classic plans did. This was one piece that was not there uh, but it essentially, you know, instead of having a whole, you know, expandable activity here and having everything captured in this top level massive project plan, uh, we can start building more standalone projects that are sort of managed on their own, uh, but then also play a role in this higher level project. Um, so uh, I actually can show you an example of this one as well. So uh, if I go look at uh, this project. Uh, I have a couple of different projects to find here. I have a new product development project and I have a manufacturer parts project. And so the idea would be you know, within sort of our, our new product development process, we may have pieces of that that sort of act as their own projects. They're going to have their own project manager um, and their own team, but then we still want the, the results of that to sort of roll up to the overall project. And so if I look at the manufacturer parts plan, yeah, here we have a, a simple plan with you know a handful of activities. We're going to develop CAD models, get manufacturing approval, define the process. Uh, if I go look at the Gantt chart for that, I can see this is a, a pretty sequential plan right now uh, that is you know taking you know several several weeks here to complete. Uh, if I go look at the new product development plan. Uh, in the new product development plan, we've got uh, concept development, we're developing marketing materials, then we have this manufacturing activity, uh, and you can see that that's actually a sub plan uh, as opposed to just a standalone activity. Uh, and then I have the sales campaign. If I go look at that sub plan, Here's the link to the plan that is, is being utilized in there. And so if I go back uh, and show my Gantt chart here, I'm gonna see here's concept development, marketing materials, manufacturing, and then here's our sales campaign kicking off. And you can see this is, uh, we're using that, uh, that sub plan as a predecessor down here. So right now, you know, that's not part of the critical path uh, because it's it's ending before the other predecessor. Uh, if I go back over to that manufacturing project and I make a change to one of these, so we're going to change this activity from one day to 15 days. That's going to push my uh, my estimated finish out to the beginning of September. And now if I go back to the new product development and take a look at that schedule, we're going to see that it has pushed out uh, that final activity. Um, and now yeah, the manufacturing sub plan uh, is part of the critical path. And so that's, uh, again, sort of the idea is it just gives you a little bit uh, more ability to you know, make your, your your high level projects a little bit more modular, where you can have, uh, you know, you can have multiple sub plans uh, and uh, you know, sort of manage each of those as its own project, and then those can roll up uh, to sort of the top level project uh, and and tie things together. It just gives you a little more flexibility that way. Uh, okay. Um, 
manufacturing process management uh, or NPM link. Uh, and there were uh, you know, a couple of you uh, that uh, sounded like we're using some of this, these capabilities. Um, a couple of enhancements on NPM link. There are actually quite a few enhancements here. Uh, some of the major ones uh, is the ability to create plant specific um, uh, bomb uh, information um, and attribute information. Uh, so you can define, you know, for your downstream bomb, you can have, you know, plant specific bomb sort of creation uh, sort of rules and setup, and also plant specific uh, attributes uh, within that. Uh, also, for for sort of building the the illustrations um, of the different process plan steps for NPM Link, uh, Creo Illustrate uh, now has direct integration uh, with Windchill. Uh, so it does not need to use the uh, the work group manager. So uh, the integration between Creo Illustrate and Windchill is improved uh, in 11.2. Um, and also uh, sort of over here on the right uh, is the ability to do a save as on a process plan. So uh, if you're actually going in, you already have a process plan developed, uh, you have a similar product that's gonna use a similar process plan. Uh, in the past, you would have had to sort of do a save as on the on the structure and then go develop that process plan from scratch. Now you can actually do a save as uh, and duplicate the process plan and then just go in and make your changes from there. Um, document classification. Um, this was actually the, uh, the top vote getter on the PTC Community Ideas site. Uh, basically, this allows you to to leverage windshield parts link functionality uh, and extend it from just doing classification of uh, WT parts. Uh, it allows you to also do document classification. So um, you, know, you can build out user defined uh, document classification structure. Uh, you can define classification attributes on all those different uh, you know, sort of document uh, class uh, classes. Uh, classify your documents, and then to to locate documents, you can browse through the classification catalog UI or do a classification search. So, you know, if you've ever uh, sort of seen or used Parts Link for you know doing uh, parts classification, that makes it a lot easier to to sort of find and reuse existing parts. This is extending that capability to documents. And so, um, you know, if if you have a lot of different documents that need their own set of attributes, but they don't need any of the other sort of administrative uh, uh, capabilities that you get through uh, creating subtypes uh, of documents. Uh, instead of going in and creating you know, hundreds of different uh, document soft types where you have to select the, the type of document, uh, you can do find you know, just a handful of document types uh, for you know, documents that need to have different life cycles or different access controls or their own customized workflow. You, know, you can use, still use document types for that uh, and then use classification when you're just trying to manage, you know, attributes that make it easier to, to sort of classify and search for those documents. Um, a quick note on ThingWorks. Um, a couple of a couple of changes to ThingWorks Navigate. Uh, the first one is simply that the the versioning uh, for Navigate is being changed with the 2.0 release. The the current uh, version of Navigate that is out is 1.9. Uh, with what would have been 2.0, uh, the the versioning is being changed to align with the Navig with the ThingWorks versioning. So uh, Navigate, what would have been Navigate 2.0, is actually going to be Navigate 8.5. Uh, to align with ThingWorks 8.5. Uh, this is expected out around the September timeframe, so this is not available uh, at this point. Uh, one of the, uh, there are quite a few enhancements to navigate uh, with 8.5, uh, but one of the, the sort of most immediate things is uh, that the Navigate Contribute app is supposed to be released uh, with Navigate 8.5. So uh, when Navigate first came out uh, several years ago, uh, they had the Navigate View apps, uh, which are have been out and available for several years at this point. Um, and uh, you know, the, there was also the, in addition to the Navigate View licensing, there was also Navigate Contribute and Navigate Author licensing, uh, but those did not actually have any apps until now. And so Navigate Contribute apps are going to start coming out uh, this fall. Uh, the first one uh, that is coming out is allowing you to 
uh, basically review and approve change requ requests through the Navigate interface. So you know, sort of taking that change management process uh, and allowing you to more easily sort of extend that to, to managers and people that would sort of normally be outside of the core windshield user group uh, by giving them a, a simple app and interface to get in to access those changes, view the information, um, and, and make their decisions. Uh, and so that was pretty much it. Uh, you know, there are obviously a lot of additional enhancements, um, you know, sort of more detailed things, uh, but those are, are a lot of the core enhancements uh, with Windchill 11.2. Um, you know, if you do have, have questions uh, about uh, any of those things, you can feel free to uh, reach out to me for technical information or sales at boundarysys.com if you have uh, sales type questions. Um, and uh, as always, you know, if, if you go to the PTC site, uh, you can get information, you know, what's new documents and things like that that are you know, just the full list of every, uh, every enhancement that has been made. Um, so with that, I will, uh, I will open it up for questions. Uh, so far, uh, we do not have any questions. Uh, we just have one comment uh, that pointed out uh, that with my Vandalay Industries reference, I have obviously been watching Seinfeld, uh, which is absolutely correct. And uh, good job uh, picking up on that reference. Um, so any other questions uh, at this point? All right, uh, I haven't seen any additional questions show up. So um, thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, again, if you do have uh, questions that you think of afterwards, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I will go ahead and leave, uh, leave the webinar up just for a couple more minutes in case anybody does come up with a question. But uh, if not, uh, have a good day. Uh, one question that just came in was, can we send uh, the slide deck out to the participants? Uh, yes, we should be able to do that. Uh, I will get it to our marketing team uh, and they will, uh, they will send this out to everyone. All right. Thanks once again, everyone, and have a great day.